complete beginner's guide for the DJI Mini 3. This video is gonna go through everything that you need to know to get up and flying with this drone fast. So whether you are a first time pilot or you're just interested in all the features and all the capabilities of this drone, this video is gonna go through everything that you need to know about the DJI Mini 3. Now, before we dive into the content for this drone, I just wanna go through everything that you're gonna learn in this video. So first we'll do an overview of the drone itself. Then we'll go into the two controller options that you have for the Mini 3. From there, we'll dig into the DJI Fly app and I'll show you what every button does and how you actually use the app to get better shots when you're out flying. Then we'll go into your first flight, some things that you need to think about. We'll go into how you fly a drone, just so that you can have an understanding of how to move your drone in the sky and get better shots. Then we'll explore the quick shots and what you can do with some of the automation. And last, we'll talk about all the different photo modes that you can use in this drone when you're out flying. So I know there is a ton to unpack in this video, so let's get started on your beginner's guide to the DJI Mini 3. All right, so let's just talk about the drone itself and everything that's on this drone. So it comes completely folded up and the bottom legs fold forward and the top arms fold back. Now on the front of your drone, you're gonna have a guard. This is protecting your camera and your gimbal. So you never wanna fly with this on because it's holding your camera in place. If you fly with this on, it could ruin the motors that are attached to the gimbal. So to take this off, there's a little latch on the bottom and you just pull this down and out and away and it's gonna release the camera. Now the camera can move in three directions. It's a three axis gimbal. So that allows it to be completely stabilized when you turn it on. And then on the back of the drone is where you're gonna put your battery. So when you get the drone, it's gonna be empty and you'll just slide your battery in until you hear the click. Now, when you're looking straight down on the drone, you'll see a button on the back. To turn on your drone, you press once and hold until all four lights turn on and then the drone will do a little motion, you'll hear a sound, and that means the drone is on. To turn it off, you press once and hold, and all the lights will turn off. Now, looking at the front of this drone, you'll see your camera, the three axis gimbal, and then you'll see the two areas in the upper left and right corners. These are not sensors, these are just air intake vents to cool down the drone. You'll also see back by the power button, there's two other vents, and also right behind the camera, behind the gimbal. So these are just areas to keep the drone a little bit cooler. Now there's no obstacle avoidance sensors on this drone. However, on the bottom, you'll see that there's these two sensors that tell you the distance from the ground to the drone. And so this is useful when it's takeoff and landing so that it can sense where the ground is. Now on the back of the drone, you'll see that there is a USB-C port and there's a micro SD card slot. So when you're filming or taking photos, you'll wanna make sure that you have a card in here because this is where you're gonna be recording your media. Now you can also record your media that's coming to the controller However, that's gonna be a lower res file than what's gonna be recorded here on the drone. So you wanna make sure that you have a big enough micro SD card to be able to capture enough footage when you're out flying. I typically fly with 128 gigabytes in my micro SD cards. Now to take out the battery, there's two tabs on either side of the battery. You just press in, pull out, it'll release the battery. Just make sure when you put your battery in, that it clicks so that you know it has a firm connection and that it's not gonna fall out when you're flying. Now, when you look down on your drone, you'll notice there's actually two different types of propellers. And the difference is the markings on the tips. And also there's this little line on the right front one and the back left one. And you'll also see that same marking on the arm. And this is because there's two different styles of propellers on your drone and you need to make sure you put the right one in the right place if you're replacing one. Now to replace these propellers, you'll get a little screwdriver, you unscrew it, take it off, put the new one on, screw it back on. So you'll need to make sure that you're carrying the little small screwdriver with you whenever you're out flying in case you break a propeller. Now, if you ever see cracks or damage on the propellers, you'll wanna make sure that you replace it because even though the drone will probably still fly, if it does have a crack, it could break mid-flight and then your drone could fall out of the sky. Whenever you're about to fly, you inspect all your propellers, make sure there's no major cracks or no damage, and that way you'll be able to make sure that your drone will always stay in the air. Now, last thing, let's talk about the camera lens because you can actually take off this front lens element. You twist it counterclockwise and pull it straight off, and now you have the lens removed from the camera. This is where you can add additional accessories like ND filters or polarizers. They just replace this front lens element. Now, when you're replacing your lens or changing it out, you just wanna make sure that you're in a clean environment and that no dust is gonna get in there. Now, that's everything about the drone itself. So next, let's check out everything about the controllers.
Now there's two controller options for the Mini 3. You have the traditional controller, which you would put your phone into, and then you have this new one, which has the screen built in. Now, I personally have been using the one with the screen because it makes it a lot easier, but both of these controllers work great with the Mini 3, and I'll show you the differences between both of them. Let's first go over the standard RC, which is the main controller that you put your phone into. Now you open up the controller on the top, and then you connect your phone with the cable that's inside. Mine has the lightning port on it, but if you're using an Android device, you just switch this cable out. And so you put your phone in the little grooves that are on top of the controller and then plug it in. Now on the bottom of your controller is where the two thumbsticks are. So you're gonna pull these out and you're gonna screw them into where they go on the front of the controller. Okay, so now we're set up with the controller to start flying. Now looking at the front, what you see are a few different buttons. The two joysticks are gonna control all the directionality of your drone. And later in this video, we'll talk about how you actually fly in the sky and what you do with both of these thumbsticks and how you can use them to control your drone. Now in the upper left-hand corner, you're gonna see an FN button. This is a function button. And in your menu, you can change this to do different things. Now in the upper right-hand corner, you have a camera switch button. Now this button changes from video back to photo. So this is where you'll switch between both just using the controller. You can also do it on the screen in the app, but this is a physical way on the controller that allows you to flip quickly between photo and video. Now in the middle, you have two buttons and this switch. On the far left, you have a return to home and also a pause button. On the far right, you have your power button. And then you have these three modes in the middle. You have cine, normal, and sport mode. And this allows you to go slow, medium, fast. And in the menu, you can actually set what each one of these are. And I'll show you that when we get to the section all about the app. Now, when you look down on the controller, there's a button on the right-hand side and a jog wheel on the left-hand side. The jog wheel allows you to control your gimbal up and down. So while you're flying, if you need to move the gimbal up or down to get a different shot, well, that's you'll use the jog wheel here on the controller and that allows you to move that gimbal. Now on the right is your start and stop record or take a photo button, so depending on what mode you're in. Now the last thing on this controller is on the bottom, there's a USB-C and this is how you charge the controller. So pretty basic, but a lot of functionality with just a few buttons. And this is what you use when you add your phone. It works great, I've been using this controller for a long time. You don't need the newer controller with the screen built in, it's more of a convenience and it does have some extra functionality. So this is the DJI RC. Now on the back of it, you have your two thumbsticks. Now you're gonna pull these out and you're gonna screw them in on the front. Now this controller has a screen built in. So basically everything that's on your phone is built into this controller. It's an all-in-one system and it's lightweight and it's not that much bigger than the standard controller. I actually really like working with this one. Now looking at the front, it's a very similar setup. You have your two joysticks that control how you fly the drone. You have your home and pause button on the left, your power button on the right, and then cine, normal, and sport mode in the middle, which again is slow, medium, fast for flying your drone in the air. Now looking down at the top, you actually have some different buttons. You have a record button on the left and a photo button on the right. So no matter which mode you're in when you're out flying, you can hit the record button and it's gonna start recording video. And vice versa, if you hit the photo button, it's gonna to switch to photo and take a photo. So there is no button that switches back and forth between photo and video mode, like on the other controller on the front right hand corner. And also when you look down at the top, you have two jog wheels. One is for your gimbal and one is for your zooming. And so your left one is for your gimbal, just like on the other controller, but now this added right one is for zooming. So the Mini 3 can zoom in two times when it's in 4K, up to four times in 1080p. And so you can use this zoom to do smooth zooming motion when you're out flying. Now on the back where your thumbsticks are underneath, there's now two buttons that are customizable, C1 and C2. So in the menu, I'm gonna show you where you can customize these buttons, but you could add two different things that you need access to on the controller, and it makes it much easier than having these functions somewhere on the screen or in the menus where you have to actually dig for these functions. Now on the bottom of this controller, you'll see a USB-C. This is how you charge the controller, and also this is how you connect it directly to your computer. Now there's also a flap, and underneath this flap, you'll see a micro SD card slot, and this is how you can record and also download your photos and videos from your drone to the SD card that's in your controller. And then there's another USB-C that says host. And on DJI's website, it says this is for connecting a, the DJI cellular module, which will need to be purchased separately. So a super simple controller, but more functionality than the other controller, and you have the built-in screen.
All right, so now we're gonna go into everything about the DJI Fly app. And so I'm gonna show you a screen record so you can see how everything works. And we're just gonna talk through what every button does. All right, so now I have a shot of myself here on the ridgeline. I'm just doing an orbit and we'll go through everything on the screen. So let's start clockwise in the upper left-hand corner and work around. So I'm gonna go back to the main screen. And so this is what you're gonna see when you first turn on the drone. You'll see in the upper left-hand corner, it's gonna show your positioning. And then underneath that, you'll see that it says fly safe update required. Now, this is where updates will pop up with your drone. So if there's new firmware for the drone, for the controller, for anything else, you'll see this update here. And so when you're out flying, you just wanna make sure that you always update your drone to the newest firmware to make sure that there's no issues when you're out flying. Now, in the upper right-hand corner, there's gonna be some tutorials and some information about the drone. In the lower left-hand corner, you have your album, which is where you'll see all the footage that's both on the controller and on the drone. You have SkyPixel, which is DJI's social media platform, and then you have your profile with all your user account settings. So whenever you wanna go fly, you'll see this screen and you wanna hit the button in the lower right-hand corner that says go fly. And then when you go to the fly screen, this is what you're gonna see. So let's start in the upper left-hand corner and work our way around clockwise. Upper left-hand corner, you have your back button that goes back to that screen we just looked at. Now next to that, it says in mode. Now in the center of your controller, we have cine mode, normal mode, and sport mode. This is the speed at which you're flying. So when you change this, I'm gonna switch it over to cine mode. We're gonna both put up a pop-up that says what mode you're moving into, and then it's also gonna say it in the upper left-hand corner. So if you're ever wondering what mode you're in, just look up there in the upper left-hand corner. Now next to that, it just says in flight. If there's any issues with your drone, say it's not connecting to GPS or anything like that, it's gonna pop up right here. But because mine is fully connected to GPS and everything's working properly, it just says in flight. Now you can click this button and it's gonna bring up some information about the drone. This is where you could see your flight status. Mine is normal, so everything is working well. If there's any issues, you'll see it pop up right here. Now the next item down is return to home altitude. So this is the height at which the drone will return back to where it started. So whenever you take off your drone, it's gonna set a home point wherever you're at in the earth. And when you hit return to home on the controller or in the app, it's going to go to this altitude that you set right here, fly back to you and then descend. So make sure that this height is a height that makes sense for the location that you're filming in. I'm on top of a mountain, so it doesn't really matter. I can keep this pretty low, but if you're somewhere with trees or if you're down low and there's some rolling hills around you, you'll want that to go higher than the highest thing around you before it flies back because the last thing you want it to do is to fly into something when it's returning to home. Now the next option is flight protection. You have max altitude, so this is the highest that the drone will go, and max distance. So right now mine is set to 393 feet high and 6,500 feet distance. Now when you're flying, you don't wanna fly outside of line of sight, so you're probably never gonna hit your max distance, but that's where you can set how far you want it to go and put limits. So if you wanna make sure that you're not flying higher than say 200 feet, you would add a limit here and say, I only wanna go up to 200-ish feet. And that way the drone will never go above it and the controller will stop you if you're trying to fly beyond these limits. Now underneath that, you'll see your SD card. It's showing that mine has 113 gigabytes left. So I have a ton of footage left on this SD card. And you can also format this right here. So if you click the format button, it's gonna completely erase your card. So make sure that you wanna erase your card if you're gonna hit that format button. So tap anywhere outside the screen to get out of this menu, and then we'll keep going around the controller. So the next button it shows, it says 66. This is your battery percentage. So right now I have 66% left on this battery, and you can click this. And when you click this, it's gonna show you when the drone's gonna return to home and when it's gonna do a forced landing. And then it shows you the complete time until the battery's fully done, fully depleted. So ideally you wanna be coming back around that return to home time because you wanna make sure that you have plenty of time to bring the drone back and land it safely without the battery being completely depleted. And if you run the battery all the way to the end till you have like 1%, well, the drone could fall out of the sky technically. So ideally, you wanna make sure that you always have the drone have enough battery to land safely so that you don't have your drone fall out of the sky. Next to the 63, it shows the time left. Now, this time's gonna fluctuate depending on how you're flying. So if you're in sport mode, flying super fast or it's windy, you'll start seeing this number drop down faster. But I'm just hovering, so it's not gonna drop down as fast. It's just a general idea of how much time you have left on the battery. So you just wanna make sure you look at your percentage in time and then fly back with enough time to land safely. Now next to that, it shows your RC strength. So you could click on that and it shows that my RC signal is strong. And so that's the signal from 
the controller to the drone. And so if you go behind an object like a building or a mountain, you'll see this start to drop. Or if you're flying too far away, you'll also see this drop. And you'll just wanna make sure that you have a strong RC signal so that you don't lose connection from your drone to the controller. Now next to that is your satellite. If you click on that, it's gonna show that I have a strong GPS signal. I'm connected to 24 satellites. So these drones need enough satellites to be able to position itself on the Earth. And so if you only have like say, eight satellites connected, it's not gonna have a strong enough connection to set your home point. So you'll see this number fluctuate. And if you rush to take off your drone and it doesn't have enough satellites connected, it's gonna limit you on how far you can fly, but also it's not gonna be able to use the GPS to keep its location on the earth. So right now, I'm not touching the controller. The drone is just staying up there in the sky and not moving because it's using GPS to triangulate where it is on the earth. If I didn't have enough satellites connected right now, it could just drift one way or the other with this little bit of breeze that's pushing on the drone. And so it's important to make sure that you have enough satellites before you take off and you start flying. Now the next button in the upper right hand corner is three dots. This is your deeper menu. And I'll go through all of these settings in a little bit, but let's continue on this screen. Now underneath that you have all your camera options. So right now I'm recording. I'm gonna stop the recording and you're gonna see this little film strip because I'm in video mode. You can click that, it's gonna show you where photo mode is, video, quick shots, and panoramic. So in photo mode, you're gonna have the options of a single photo, an AEB photo, which takes a series of exposures, and then a time shot. So if you wanna set it to like 10 seconds and then it takes a photo, you can use the time shot. For video, it's just video on this menu. For quick shots, it's gonna set up a quick shot menu, which I'll go through when we start talking about quick shots later on in this video. And then at the bottom, you have panoramic, which I'll talk about in the photo section. So let's go back to video and keep going down. Underneath the film strip on the far right is your record button. This is gonna start and stop recording, and it's also gonna do things like start your quick shot or take your photo. Now next to that, you have three options. On the top, this is where you rotate the camera from horizontal to vertical. So I click this button, it's gonna rotate the camera and give you a vertical image. I'm gonna click this back. So the camera physically rotates so that you can have a vertical image if you are someone who does shoot vertical content. Now underneath that you have a zoom. So I'm in 4K, if I click this button, I could do a two times zoom and you could see me there in the distance. Now if I bring this down to 1080p, you have option to go all the way to a four times zoom. And there you can see I'm pretty far away, but with the four times zoom, you can zoom in pretty close to your subject. Now the issue with the zoom on this camera is that it's not an optical zoom. So you're basically just punching in on the footage digitally. So your quality is not gonna be as good when you use this zoom function. And then underneath that is your autofocus and manual focus. So if you wanna manually focus your image, you push it over to MF, press and hold this, and you can adjust your focus far or near. Personally, when I'm flying, I typically just shoot with autofocus, but if you need to use manual focus, this is where you do it. Now, underneath the record button or the photo button, that's where you're gonna see your library of content that you've already shot. So you can see here, I have all of my photos and videos that I've shot already, and I can download them to the controller by clicking the little download icon in the upper left-hand corner. If you have this connected to your phone, it works the same way, and it will download to the storage on your phone. But in this menu, you can view your photos and videos, and you can also bring them on to whatever device you're flying on. Now, next underneath that is your camera settings. Right now mine is set to auto. I can click this button and it goes to pro. So this is where you could take full manual control of your shutter speed, your ISO, your white balance, everything. If you click auto, it's just gonna do all of those settings for you automatically and just give you the best image that the drone thinks looks good. I'm gonna keep it in auto and just show you how you use auto and the different options that you have. So next to the auto button, there's an EV button. You click this and you'll see this menu pop up where you can go plus or minus. So let's just go plus so I can show you what it does. If you say plus three, it's gonna take what the drone thinks is the best exposure and add three stops of light to it. So if your image is a little bit too dark or a little bit too bright, you can use this exposure compensation to take the drone, what it thinks is looking good and adjust it slightly. So there are times where the image might be a little bit too bright and I'll bring it down to negative 0.3 or negative 0.7 just because I think that looks better for the exposure, or if it's darker situation, I might bump it up to plus three or plus 0.7. You just gotta play around with it and figure out what looks best for the exposure that you're going for. But if you just keep it at zero, oftentimes this is gonna look good out of camera. Now next to that, you're gonna see resolution and frames per second. You can click on this, and this is where you can change all of your modes. So let's go over to 4K, 
30 frames per second. So you'll see that there's an HQ. So the HQ means that your footage is gonna have the HDR look. So when you're flying with this drone in 30 frames per second or lower, it shoots this HDR quality where the highlights are gonna be a little bit more muted and the shadows are gonna be a little bit more lifted so that you can get better exposure overall. So for this scene here where you have a bright sun and a really contrasted foreground, you're gonna see a little bit more in that foreground and a little bit more of the sky. Whereas if I go to 2.7K and put it up to 60 frames per second, you're gonna have more contrast. So you won't see as much of this HDR quality, which means that your shadows are gonna be a little bit darker and your highlights are gonna be a little bit brighter. So if you're shooting at 48, 50, or 60 frames per second, you don't have access to this HDR, but if you're shooting at 30 frames per second or under, it's gonna automatically have this HDR on the footage. So that's just something to keep in mind. With this drone, 4K, 30 frames per second is your max, whereas if you're in 2.7K or 1080, you can go up to 60 frames per second. So next to your resolution and frame rate, you have your storage. And when you click this, it goes from how much data you have and how much time you have left. So I have 110 gigabytes on this card, which equates to two hours and 36 minutes. So that just shows you how much data you have left. Now, if we click this auto button in the corner and go to pro mode, now we have access to change all of our settings right here in the menu. So if I click on any of these settings, it's gonna pull up an additional menu. The little aperture icon on the right changes all of your exposure settings and the three lines with the dots changes the other camera settings. So I could go through and change my ISO or I could change my shutter speed and this is all manual. Now if I click the three lines with the dots, I could change my white balance. I could go from auto to manual and change my white balance. I could change my resolution, my frames per second and I could also see information about my SD card. And then when I want to get out of manual mode, I just click the pro in the lower right hand corner and it goes back to auto mode. Now on the far left of your screen, this is going to be some data that tells you what's going on with your drone in the sky. Where it says zero miles per hour on top of the height and distance, this is how fast the drone is moving in that direction. So if I was to go up into the sky, you could see that now the miles per hour is going to be going up. I'm going four miles per hour into the sky. Whereas if I descend, and as I descend, you'll see that it goes to a negative. Now, if I go forward, you'll see that it's giving me a positive miles per hour on the above the distance. And then as I move backwards, it's also a positive. So it's gonna be a positive whether you're moving forwards or backwards or left or right. But if you're going up into the sky, you're gonna see a positive on that left number and you'll see a negative when it's coming down. That's just to give you an indication of how fast you're moving up, down, forwards, back, left, right all the direction. Now underneath that, where it says H, that's your height, that's how high you are above where you took off from. So this isn't how high you are above sea level, it's above where you took off from. And next to that is your distance away from your home point. So home point is right here where I took off from. My drone is 170 feet that direction. So you can just always have an indication of where you're at in the sky by looking at your height and your distance. Now in the lower left-hand corner is your radar. You can click this, and you can see where the drone is, where I am, and where home point is. And so as I move the drone around, you'll see the little triangle move in relation to me and in relation to the home point. Now, if you click the little map icon in the lower left-hand corner, it's gonna bring up a map of where you're at. So right now it's not showing anything because I don't have a map loaded here on this controller. But if you're connected to your phone, you could see your streets and everything else that's around you so that you could see where you're flying on a map. Now, if you click the little arrow in the lower left-hand corner, it's gonna minimize the radar or the map that you have in this lower left-hand corner. All right, so I have a low battery, it's starting to beep. It says I have 20% left and I have five minutes remaining. This beep will continue until you return to home. So I'm gonna bring it back and I'm gonna swap out the batteries. So you'll have this pop-up screen pop up whenever the drone is gonna automatically return to home. All right, so I'm gonna do a battery swap. Just pull the two tabs, pull it out, put the new battery in, wait for it to click, press once, hold, ready to start flying again. All right, so as soon as I power on the drone, I'm just waiting for the screen to pop up. You'll see the go fly pop up here in a second. All right, so I'm gonna hit go fly and you'll see that it's showing zero satellites are connected. And that's where you'll now see a warning. It says, take off with caution, no GPS. So I'm gonna take off, put it kind of above us. And I'm just gonna wait till these satellites connect. So it's given me a max altitude, which is just right up there. It's about 10 feet in the sky. And I'm just waiting for the satellites to connect. Satellites connected, it's over 12, it's now at 13. So it's gonna connect. Now I can fly. 
All right, so the last button on this main flying screen is this H with the arrow. So if you click this, it's gonna have a land button and a return to home. And to work this, you just press and hold. And so I click the return to home, it's gonna fly to the height that I have set for return to home, fly back. And if at any point you wanna cancel your return to home, you just press the X. Now the other button that you have is land. So as soon as you have the drone hovering somewhere right around here, you can press and hold the land button and it's gonna automatically land for you. So you don't have to worry about landing. All right, so my drone's over there on the path. There's no bikers coming, so it's not gonna crash. I'm gonna press that button, hit land, Landed. and now it's gonna slowly descend until it's safely on the ground. All right, the drone has landed. Now, if you wanna take off using the same technique, you press this little arrow with the circle on the left-hand side, and then press and hold, and the drone will automatically take off, and you're good to go. Please check it on the map. So that's everything on this main flying screen. Let's dig into the deeper menus and let me show you what else you have access to. So you click these three dots in the upper left hand, in the upper right hand corner, and it's gonna bring up this advanced menu. So you have safety, control, camera, transmission, and about. Under the safety, you'll see the same auto return to home altitude, max altitude, max distance. We already went over those. You have compass and IMU. This is where you can calibrate your compass and your IMU. You'll probably never need to touch this, but if there's any error, you might have to go through and hit calibrate and your drone will tell you when you need to do that. Now, there's an unlock geo zone feature. So if you wanna fly somewhere that is not allowed on the map that you're at, well, this is where you're gonna be able to unlock that geo zone. And I would refer back to the DJI website to learn more about how to unlock a geo zone if that's something that you need to do. Now, underneath that, you have find my drone. If you click this button and it's gonna show you a map and it's gonna show you where your drone was last seen, you could start flashing and beeping in the lower right-hand corner, and the drone will start flashing its lights and actually beeping. And then you have a few options here on the side for the maps to show you where you're at, where the drone's at, where True North is, and then you could also use different styles of maps, the standard, a satellite, or you can do a mixed. So let's press back in the upper left-hand corner. Next underneath that, you have your battery info, and then you have advanced safety settings. So let's click advanced safety settings. So first you have what happens if your signal is lost. That's between your controller and your drone. You could either return to home, descend, or hover. Right now, I have returned to home. So if the drone signal is lost and it's just flying by itself without connected to the controller, it's gonna return to home. That's probably the safest in most situations. However, there might be other situations where you wanna make sure that you descend because you don't want it to stay up in the air if there's something else going on in the air that could cause issues. And then last is hover. If you just want the drone to stop and hover and not move, you would wanna keep that last option. Now underneath that, you have a propeller stop. So if you bring both your sticks inward or outwards, it's gonna stop all the propellers. Now that's only for a complete emergency because if you do that, well, the drone's gonna fall out of the sky. So this is just telling you. And then last on the safety menu, there is a payload mode. So if you have an accessory like your propeller guards and the aircraft is in a wind-free environment, you might wanna turn this on. It's a setting that I personally have never used. Let's go back. Next, you have control. So under control, this is about the drone itself. So first you could set your units. I'm in the US, so I use Imperial, but this is where you could set it to metric. Underneath that, you have your gain and expo tuning. So this is where you can fine tune your cine, normal, and sport mode, how fast the drone moves and how fast the drone feathers in and out of movements. And depending on how you wanna fly your drone, you might adjust these a little bit to make it slower or faster in each of the modes. Cine is the slowest mode, normal is kind of medium, and then sport is really fast. So play around with this if the normal configuration doesn't work for you and it's a little bit too fast or a little bit too slow. Now next underneath that in the control, you have your gimbal mode. So right now mine's in follow mode. I could switch that to FPV mode. So as I fly in FPV mode, I just put it in sport. You could see that the camera now tilts left and right like an FPV drone. So as I move, you're flying, it's gonna have this kind of arcing motion as if it's flying FPV. Follow mode is gonna keep your horizon always level. So it just depends on the style of flying that you like when you're out filming. Next, you have gimbal calibration. So if you're having any issues with your gimbal, you could go through and calibrate your gimbal here. Again, it's not something that you wanna do unless you're having issues with the gimbal. Now, you could also recenter the gimbal here, which if you press that button, it's gonna go from 90 straight down or 90 straight up. Now, underneath that, you have your remote controller modes. I keep mine in mode two, but if you wanna change your 
controller configuration of how the drone flies, this is where you change it. Now you also have button configuration. So this is where it shows you all the different buttons that you have set up and you could configure these to do different things. So on this controller, I have C1 and C2. Uh, C1 I have set to snapping the gimbal from straight down to straight up and C2 sets the vertical versus horizontal. Now you also have your zoom function, which is in the upper right hand corner, but also you could press C1 or C2 and adjust your shutter speed or ISO if you press and hold C1 or C2 and then use the zoom rocker in the upper right hand corner. And you could change all of these to do different things. So you could go into your menus and play around with what configuration you want best for the features that you need when you're out flying. Now at the end of the control menu, you have your flight tutorial, which is gonna give you more instruction on how to fly your drone. All right, so let's go over to the camera. All right, so let's go over to the camera menu. You have anti-flicker. I just keep mine on auto. You have your histogram. When you turn this on, it shows you all your exposure values from the darkest to the brightest. I typically like to fly with this on so I could see my exposure when I'm out flying. And if you have this on, you could drag it to anywhere on the screen or click the X to get rid of it. You could also set up your peaking level. So if you're using manual focus, it shows you what is in focus by outlining the objects that are in focus in red. So I could turn this on high and you could see that when I put it into manual mode, everything is in focus. I'm gonna turn that off because I don't need that. You have overexposure warning, so that's turned on, and that's gonna show you these zebras, which is what is completely overexposing in your footage. So right now, what's completely overexposing is the sun because it's the brightest object in the sky. So you could use this to see where your image goes completely white. Now next, you have grid lines, which is something that you can add on your footage. So you could put, say, a cross, and it shows you where your center mark is, and it goes across all the way on the footage. Now this isn't recording, this is just guides for when you're out flying, so that you could have better compositions in your shots. So a lot of times it might be useful to have a center mark or the thirds up so that you could see where your third is, which is a, so when you're flying, you could see exactly where, say your left third is, and you can put your subject right there. Next underneath that, you have your white balance. So you can put this on manual and you can adjust your white balance here in the menu, or you could keep it on auto. Now the last options that you have in this camera menu is your SD card your auto sync HD photos, cache when recording, and max cache capacity. So when you're flying, the, dr the controller can record a backup version of whatever you're filming. This is your cache recording. And so you can set how much data you want cached on the controller. And also it can auto sync your HD photos to your phone. So say you take a photo, it's automatically gonna sync that photo to your phone when you're out flying. Now you can go to transmission. This is gonna show all your transmission for your signal. Right now I just use dual band. I just leave this on auto. And then the about section is all the information that's about your drone. So that is everything that you need to know about the DJI Fly app. Now I know it may seem pretty confusing with all of these buttons and all of this data, but it's all super important. And it's all gonna help you when you're out flying. All right, so you're ready for your first flight. And ideally what you wanna do is find a space where you can have a lot of room to play around and you're not gonna run into anything. So I'm up here in these hills, there's nothing around me. It's a great spot to fly the drone and play around with it. And what you'll wanna do is just find an easy place to take off and land from. So just nice open, nothing in the way. And ideally when you start, you wanna make sure that you have a full charge on your controller and a full charge on your drone. Now, since I've been making this video, I've been draining the battery of my drone, so you'll see it's at 48%, but for your first flight, make sure that you have a complete charge on both your controller and your drone, because you don't wanna take it up and then run out of battery right away. You wanna have some time to play around. Now, to turn on your drone, you press once, and then hold and all the lights will light up and then you'll hear a chime and that's when the drone is turned on. And the same thing with the controller. You're gonna press the power button once and then hold until all the lights turn on and then you hear the chime and then both your controller and the drone are turned on. Now out of the box, they're paired. So you shouldn't have any issue with the drone connecting to your controller. But if they're not paired, you go into your menu setting where we showed you earlier and you repair the drone. Now you're ready to take off. Both the controller and the drone are powered up. You're at a good spot and the drone is ready to go. There's two ways that you can take the drone off from the ground. The first is the easiest. On the left-hand side of your screen, the little arrow with the circle, 
you press that, it's gonna pull up this menu that says take off. And basically what it's gonna do is the drone's gonna ascend into the sky and hover. So I'm gonna hold that button in the center till the green is full, and then the drone is gonna take off into the sky. Now the drone's just gonna hover there until I start using the thumbsticks. So if I wanna land the drone, I can do the exact same thing. So I can click that little H icon with the arrow and then hold in the center. And the drone is gonna descend down to the ground, find where it's gonna land, and the propellers will turn off. So for the first time you're flying, I would suggest do this. Take it up, let it hover for a minute, bring it back down, just to make sure everything's working. Now the second way, which is the way that I normally take off and fly, is I just pull both joysticks inward. That's gonna start the rotation of the propellers, but it's not gonna take off. It's just spinning there on the ground. Now I pull up on the left joystick and the drone will ascend into the sky. And if I let go of the joysticks, the drone will just sit there and hover. And that's one cool thing about these kind of drones is that if you don't touch the joysticks, when it has a strong GPS signal, the drone will just sit here in this one spot. And now if I want to bring the drone down and land it, I just pull down on the left joystick and I just keep holding the down on the left joystick until the drone fully goes down to the ground and the propellers shut off. And then I can let go of the controller. So those are the two ways to take off and land. Now let's go over how the drone actually flies in the sky. So I'm gonna pull both joysticks inward. I'm gonna start the propellers. I'm gonna pull up on the left joystick. It's gonna fly up into the sky. And let's go over how these joysticks work. Remember, I'm in mode two. So if you're flying in a different mode, your joysticks are gonna work different, but I suggest flying in mode two. So let's get a shot of these arches so you can see what I'm doing. So on the left joystick, if you press up, the drone's gonna go up into the sky. Now, if you pull it down, the drone is gonna descend down. Now, if I pull left on this left joystick, the drone is going to rotate in a circle. Now, if I pull right, the drone is gonna rotate the other direction, to the right. So you could think of your left joystick like the drone is in a single spot on the earth and then it rotates. So it can only go up and down that single spot and then it can also just rotate. That's all the left joystick does. Now let's point at this archway again. Now for the right joystick, if I push forward, the drone is gonna move closer to where those arches are. And it's going towards that tree now. Now if I pull backwards on that right joystick, the drone's gonna move backwards. And you're gonna see the arches come into frame and the drone is gonna move back and past us over there. Now if I pull left on that right joystick, the drone is gonna move that way. So it's like sliding to the left. And then if I pull right on that right joystick, the drone is gonna move that way. So it's sliding to the right. So you could think of your right joystick as moving away from that center point. So wherever that center point was, if you push forward, it's gonna move that way, forward, away from it. It's gonna move backwards away from that point or left or right. So the easiest way to think about these two joysticks is left joystick, singular point, rotate around, right joystick, it's gonna move out and away in any direction. And then the last thing is you can point these joysticks in a 360 around. So if I wanted to push up and also spin to the left, well, I could put to the upper left-hand corner and you could see how this drone is moving up and rotating. And now if I pull right on that right joystick, the drone is also gonna be moving to the right and you're getting this big arching helix motion. So you can really get fancy with your combinations and there's a lot of different ways that you can move this drone into the sky to be able to get some different looking footage. And at the end of this video, I'll link to another one of my videos that goes through 100 plus drone moves that you could use. And I go through all these different moves that you can make using these two joysticks and also your gimbal and your zoom. And so the last thing that I wanna go over is how you use your gimbal. So let's fly back to, towards where we are. I'm gonna use both joysticks to kind of position myself away from us. As you can see the structure in front and me out here in the distance. So the left jog wheel is controlling your gimbal. If you pull that left, the gimbal's gonna rotate down. And if I pull right on that jog wheel, the gimbal's gonna move up. And the cool thing about this drone is that gimbal can move up to 60 degrees looking up, so you could have the gimbal pointing straight up into the sky. Now with the controller with the screen built in, the other jog wheel, if you pull right, it's gonna zoom in. 
And if you pull left on that jog wheel, it's gonna zoom out. And so that's all the different ways that you could use this controller to move your drone and the camera in the sky. Okay, so let's dig into quick shots because quick shots are the only automation that you have in this drone. You have no active track, but if you get to a cool spot like this and you just wanna get an awesome automation mode and not have to think about controlling your drone, well, quick shots are the way to go. So you're gonna click the film strip and you're gonna find quick shots, which is the little reel icon. And it's gonna pull up this menu where it shows droney, rocket, circle, helix, or boomerang. And each one of these is gonna give you a different style of shot. And it actually shows you what that's gonna look like on the screen here on the left. So let's just start with a droney. I'm gonna minimize this screen. And you can see that it finds me with a plus icon. So I could either draw a box around myself by making a box from left to right corner like that. And it's gonna grab me. You can click the X at any time and exit out, or I could just click the plus icon and it's gonna grab me. So there's two ways to set up this quick shot. Now, in terms of resolution and exposure, you could set everything like you would if you were normally flying without using the quick shots. So you could set up auto versus manual on all your exposure settings, and then you could also change your resolution and frame rates. I'm gonna keep mine at 4K, 30 frames per second on auto. I'm gonna set my distance away, so you could go up to 360 meters away, but I'm just gonna do the shortest, which is 120 meters. And then all you have to do is click start it's gonna give you a countdown and then it's gonna automatically do the move so here is the droney it's just gonna keep me centered and fly up and away now once the shot is finished you'll see that the drone is flying back to the original start position and once it finally gets to that spot then you'll be able to set up another quick shot or start flying and take photos or videos. All right, so now the drone is back. So you can just click the button and change and do a different move. I'm gonna do the rocket. And so the rocket is gonna fly straight up from this pot, spot. Now, one thing to note when you're using quick shots and you hit go, it's automatically gonna start recording as soon as it starts the quick shot. So it's just gonna give you a complete file end to end. You can't just let the drone record as you fly. It's basically gonna start and stop every time you start a quick shot. So let me just show you what each one of these quick shots looks like so you can get a sense of how you could use them. So this one is the circle. Next, this one is the Helix. access to is called the boomerang. Now these quick shots are super useful to get good looking footage easily, it's an automation. Now the one thing that you can do is while you're actually in a quick shot mode, you can move a little bit and the drone will track you. Very limited tracking though. So if I put it on say the circle and I wanted to follow me, I could click the plus icon, follow to the left, I'm gonna walk this way and you'll see that it does track me a little bit as you do the quick shot. It's simple though, it's not a ton of tracking. So this is almost like a fake tracking shot that you could get for a few seconds, but you can see as soon as it pulls in front, 
well, the shot's not gonna look that good. So really, it's basically for just making sure that you're centered, so if you do move around a little bit, it's gonna keep you centered with whatever you're doing, but it's not really tracking. All right, so next, let's dig into some of the photo features that you have access to on this drone. So let's go over all of the photo modes that you have accessible to you on the Mini 3. So I just got the drone up to a point where you could see me on this overlook. I can kind of see everything from the mountains over there to the ocean out there. So first you have to go into photo mode. And if you're not in it already, you just click the button here. It's gonna open up with all your different modes and you'll go to photo mode. And you have three different photography modes that you could use when you wanna take a photo. You have single, AEB, and time shot. So let's just do a single. A single is just a photo, just a single photo. You can either click the button on top of your controller to take a photo, or you can click the white button on the screen to take a photo. Now, depending on how you have your settings set up, you can either take JPEG or RAW. And so if you wanna change your mode, you just look at the bottom of your screen where it says format, click the JPEG where it says JPEG and switch it to JPEG plus RAW. So when you switch it into JPEG plus RAW, you're getting both a JPEG and a RAW photo. You can't just shoot only RAW. So it's either JPEG only or JPEG plus RAW. So I just switched over to JPEG plus, so I just switched over to JPEG plus RAW, take a photo, Great, and the raw photo is gonna give you just a lot more information that's gonna make the photo easier to edit. So I always shoot raw and I edit all my photos in Lightroom. All right, let's check out some of the other modes. And if you wanna shoot vertical photos, you just click the vertical button like I showed you in video and you could do the same thing. You could just take a photo with the camera rotated 90 degrees. Let's go back to horizontal. Now you could do AEB. So when you click AEB, what it's gonna do is it's gonna auto bracket your photos. So what that means is it's gonna take photos that are brighter and photos that are darker so that when you bring them into your editing software, you can combine them together to be able to change your exposure and account for both highlights and the shadows of a photo. So here it takes three photos. It takes one normal exposure, what the camera thinks is best exposure because I have it on auto, and then it takes a photo darker, and then it takes a photo brighter, and you can bring these into your photo software and be able to combine them. Or if you're not sure how you wanna capture the scene, it just gives you flexibility to give you a range of exposures for the place that you're shooting at. So let's click over to the photo menu one more time, and you have time shot. So when you click on time shot, it's gonna bring up another menu that goes from five seconds all the way up to 60 seconds. So let's just go to five seconds, and then when you take your photo, it's gonna wait five seconds and then it'll take the photo. And with this mode, it'll keep taking a photo every five seconds or however many seconds you have set until you stop it. So you could set this to 60 seconds and it'll take a photo every minute. Whereas if you have it to five seconds, every five seconds you can hear it, it's taking a photo. And then when you wanna stop it, you just click the photo button again or the photo button on the screen. Now the other mode that you have for photography is panoramics. So if you go back to that main menu, scroll down to where it says pano, click on pano and you have three options. You have sphere, 180 and wide angle. And so these are just different styles of panoramics. Let's click sphere. And when you click the photo button, it's gonna take a bunch of different photos in a spherical format. So you just have to wait for all the photos to be taken and it shows you a percentage on screen of how many photos it has left to take. The sphere one takes a lot of photos because it's creating a 360 degree photo as if you have like a 360 camera up in the air. So it's just gonna take a little while to get through all these photos, but then it automatically stitches them all together. With all of these panoramic modes, it's gonna automatically stitch the photos together, but then you also have all the individual photos if you wanna stitch them together yourself in your own editing software. Now the other modes you have is 180, so that's just a wide panoramic. So it's gonna take a series of photos in a line. And then the last mode you have is wide angle. So when you click the wide angle, it's gonna take a series of photos in a line, but also a few up and a few down. So it's just three different styles of panoramics that you can use if you want a wider shot of the scene that you're in. Now that's it for photo options on the DJI Mini 3, and it gives you a lot of different things that you can do when you're out flying your drone. So are you someone who wants to just take photos or are you someone who wants to shoot video? And then also you have to ask yourself, well, what are you gonna use this video for? I think the trap that a lot of us will get into is getting to a really pretty spot 
and then just grabbing a bunch of footage or a bunch of photos without actually having a plan of what you're gonna do with that footage or those photos. But the vast majority of us wanna use this for a specific purpose. So the biggest question you need to ask yourself is what is the end goal? So what do you want to achieve using this camera? When I first got into flying drones, I would just shoot a lot of pretty shots, put it together, but it ended up being pretty boring when you just see a bunch of shots strung together with no real reason of why they're together. So when I'm going out to fly, I always try to have a purpose before I actually take the drone off and start flying. For me personally, I'm either shooting for clients or I'm shooting for videos on my channel. And I'm not gonna just use a drone just because it looks cool, I'm gonna use it to help tell my story or to help enhance the video that I'm creating. So when I approach what I'm filming, I think about it in terms of how do I want to use this footage for the story that I'm telling. So recently I went up to Death Valley and I was shooting a project with my buddies around driving through this area in California and the different obstacles that we were encountering. Now, Death Valley is a national park, so you can't fly a drone. That is one thing you have to keep in mind. You have to look at your local laws and regulations. However, for this story, we actually started in BLM land before and after the park. So I actually used the drone to set the stage and shoot the first scene, and then to shoot the final scene when we were leaving. It was a great way to open and close this video, and I used the shots to set the scene of where we're at to show someone this part of California and what it looks like. So a good way to use your drone is to set the scene, to show areas from this perspective that you can't get with other cameras, show these big open landscapes. It's a great way just to capture the view and really show this unique perspective. Now another project I recently shot, I was out in Utah and I was in BLM land so I could fly the drone pretty much anywhere for the majority of this trip. Now there was an area that we were at that had this crazy landscape. It was all these weird colorful mountains. And I used my drone to create a sequence. So instead of just being a few shots to open or close a scene, I tr created an entire sequence out of my shots to progress someone through us actually interacting with the space. Great way to go about creating a sequence is think of it in seven shots. Two wides, two mediums, two close-ups, and one that's kind of unique and something different. And the good thing about drones is you can easily get that unique and different shot by just putting the drone straight up above and looking straight down. That's a perspective you can only get with a drone. So think of how you could get two different wide shots from a scene, think of how you can get two different mediums, and think of how you can get two different close-ups. And with that, Think about movement. So how are you gonna move the drone? Are you gonna be moving it left to right, up, down, forward, backwards? Are you gonna spin around? There's so many dynamic shots that you can make with your drone. And when you start stringing these together and you have your subject moving through the scene, progressing from point A to point B, well, you'll be able to create a sequence. For, so for this scene, we were climbing these mountains and the final shot is us getting to the summit and looking at the landscape. It's a very simple storyline us getting to these mountains, climbing up, and then being at the top. But I shot it with this progression in mind, and I was able to cut together this little sequence in the video that feels a lot more engaging than if it was just a few shots of the pretty landscape. So one of the biggest things that you can do when you're working with your drone is think, how can I use this tool to show my audience this area that we're at in a different view, from a different perspective? So if you're shooting photos, What's a different shot than just putting the drone up and looking out over the landscape? So for example, I have three photos here up on my wall that I've taken. They're all the straight down perspective. And I really love this shot with a drone because it's so unique. And when you get the drone up in the sky, you can see the landscape from a completely different perspective. Also, think about shadows. Shadows are gonna completely change when you're up above looking down at objects. You can see how they interact with the landscapes differently and you can get unique shots that you just don't get using other cameras. And the more that you fly, the more that you'll get used to finding these different shots and figuring out ways to use the drone that will feel more creative than just putting the drone up and looking straight out over the landscape. So what's next after this video? Well, this video was all the technical side of flying the drone and just being able to use everything with the camera. 
From here, you need to figure out why you're shooting and what you're gonna shoot using this drone. So one thing that you're gonna wanna dive into is cinematography and the types of shots that you're gonna get using your drone. I have two videos here on my channel. One goes through a bunch of different shot ideas and the other is a drone filmmaking beginner's guide which are both good ones for you to watch after finishing this video. Now editing is a skill that you should pick up so you can string your videos together and make them more interesting. And if you really wanna change the color and look of your videos, then I would suggest checking out some color grading tutorials that are really gonna show you how to make a better look out of your footage. Now I appreciate you sticking around till the end of this video because I know it was a long one. And one thing I could ask from you is can you go down and click the subscribe button and also click the thumbs up if you like this video. On this channel, I teach a lot of technical videos like this about how to use your cameras, but I also dig into a lot about how to tell stories and how to make videos that your viewers are gonna want to watch. And personally, I shoot a lot of adventure style videos. I like to do documentaries and what I call vlogumentaries. So I teach a lot about how to make that style of content here on this channel. And next, you should check out this video right here, which is your drone filmmaking beginner's guide, which goes through all the topics we didn't cover in this video, but are more focused on cinematography and better shots with your drone. I'll see you over there.